So how can you benefit from lithium supplementation? In today's video, what we'll do is uncover the unique benefits associated with lithium, how best to utilize it, the particular dosages, and some key science and research that you must be aware of. So first of all, what is lithium? Lithium is a type of metal required by the body in trace amounts from foods. Grains, vegetables, and meat are the most common sources. We know it mostly as an element of lithium ion batteries in which lithium provides numerous benefits over other options or as a prescription medication for the mentally ill. It is not actually a synthetic pharmaceutical drug. There are multiple different forms of lithium that exist such as ionic lithium as in batteries, lithium orotate, common supplement form, lithium carbonate, predominant prescription form, lithium chloride and lithium aspartate. Although lithium is a metal it should also not be mistaken for a heavy metal since lithium ions are quite small, they function more as electrolytes. Dr. Ray Pete has even called it super sodium since it produces many of the positive effects of a large dose of sodium even when taking small amounts. Since all of the electrolytes like magnesium, potassium, calcium and sodium can temporarily fill in for each other's functions as a deficiency, this might not be a bad analogy. The recommended daily allowance of lithium is one milligram per day, which is quite small. In many studies, lithium has been found to be mood stabilizing and produces pro-social effects in people. It has even been in one study categorized with omega-3 fatty acids as a frequently overlooked realistic moral bioenhancement intervention, which means that it can do exactly the above when even small amounts are added to drinking water, for example. Lithium has been commonly viewed through a lens of improving conditions like bipolar disorder and schizophrenic affectations, but may be relatively safe and effective at sub-prescription doses for milder psychological instability and anxiety. Lithium orotate having a higher bioavailability than the carbonate form was shown in a study with 42 alcoholic patients to improve depressive symptoms and potentially reduce relapse risk. They were given 150 milligrams per day, which is quite a high dose. Dr. Jonathan Wright was a big proponent of lithium for this, among other reasons, as he also conducted studies with it, finding mainly positive effects. Regular lithium orotate supplements contain about 5 to 20 milligrams, while lithium carbonate, the prescription form, usually contains between 120 and 250 milligrams in one tablet. So here's a quick fun fact about lithium. Did you know that 7-Up used to contain lithium until the 1950s? An interesting case similar to Coca-Cola. Now let's move on to the science around lithium supplementation. Among many of lithium's effects is its influence on glutamate and NMDA receptors. This study observed that lithium inhibits NMDA receptor-mediated calcium signaling, which is a powerful protector against excitotoxicity, which is the process by which cells become damaged or die due to excessive stimulation. Our results show a robust chronic effect of lithium on NMDA receptor-mediated CA2 plus response and excitotoxicity. And we can see this study here was titled Chronic Lithium Treatment Robustly Protects Neurons in the Central Nervous System Against Excitotoxicity by Inhibiting and methyl d aspartate receptor-mediated calcium influx. Furthermore, lithium inhibits excessive glutamate uptake, which is required for the manic state seen in bipolar disorder, for example, allowing for further inhibition and quieting of the nerves. Even at this relatively low blood level, synaptosomes from the cerebral cortices of lithium-treated mice showed a small but highly significant upregulation of glutamate uptake, this would be expected to exert an anti-manic effect. What is perhaps even more interesting is that lithium stabilized glutamate uptake. And so we can see this study here was titled Lithium Acutely Inhibits and Chronically Upregulates and Stabilizes Glutamate Uptake by Presynaptic Nerve Endings in Mouse Cerebral Cortex. Lithium's effect on neurotransmitters should not be understated either as it has profound effects on the serotonin system when taken long-term. This next study here looks at lithium increases serotonin release and decreases serotonin receptors in the hippocampus. Now, this confirms in part another of Ray Pete's comments that the main drawback of lithium is its serotonergic activity. 
Now, the side effects of this will be covered in a moment. Another wild study states that lithium may decrease the death rate of people with mental illness by about 75%. Subsequent multivariate survival analyses reveal lithium to be the strongest factor in regards to increased survival effects, corresponding to 3.64 one times lower chances of dying at a given age for lithium users compared to users of other antipsychotic drugs. Now, let's move on and look at the different forms of lithium supplementation. The most commonly available supplement forms of lithium are lithium orotate and lithium aspartate. As the orotate variety is the most studied, aside from lithium carbonate, it is likely the most safe and effective. Um, studies on the bioavailability of lithium orotate have been done and it is superior even to lithium carbonate. So much lower amounts are needed for the positive effects it can have. Another reason to avoid lithium aspartate may be that the aspartic acid salt that the lithium is bound to is a known excitatory agent meaning that it can exact opposite to what is trying to be achieved with lithium. Moving on to the main benefits of lithium. The main benefits of low-dose lithium as opposed to prescription amounts are mainly related to mood and mental health. It can act as a potent mood stabilizer as it does for manic people with bipolar disorder on a smaller scale. As a consequence of its anti-excitotoxic action, it may also be used as a short-term general tool for stress management. Some users report improvements in cognitive function as well. In beyond its psychiatric use, the benefits of low-dose lithium supplementation, Hamstra et al. found the following. Currently, literature shows that low-dose lithium may be beneficial for cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, metabolic, and cognitive function, as well as inflammatory and antioxidant processes of the aging body. There is also some evidence of low-dose lithium exerting a similar and sometimes synergistic effect on these systems. So it may also be used as a preventive measure in small amounts. Along with the improvements in memory and prevention of neuronal damage, lithium can also help people with treatment-resistant depression, which probably doesn't come as a surprise by now. What biohackers may be more interested in is this study which showed improved neuroplasticity via inhibition of an enzyme called glycogen synthase kinase 3 beta. This inhibition upregulates BDNF and IGF-1 which stimulates neural stem cells to produce new neurons in the hippocampus, which is a brain region associated with long-term memory and spatial navigation. The hippocampus is one of the first parts of the brain to be damaged with the onset of Alzheimer's disease. Now, here's what some nootropic enthusiasts have to say about lithium supplementation. So this guy said, feel amazing on it. Relaxed, sociable, motivated, sense of well-being and purpose. No overthinking, calm, confident, clear thoughts, and no brain fog, etc. But now when I don't take it for a day, I'm irritable, in a bad mood, and a bit depressed. The question is, do you see lithium as a drug that exhibits some change in the brain or as a nutrient the brain needs to function well? I'm on 2.5 milligrams, update drop to 1 milligram daily of lithium orotate twice per day. And here's another update. He said, four months in and I've dropped my dose to one milligram. Higher doses seem to be messing with my head a bit. Couldn't think clearly, poor memory, slightly paranoid. One milligram feels great. This next person says, great results with lithium supplementation. Consider supplementing with lithium orotate if you're struggling with the f uh, fight or flight symptom in social situations, e.g. public speaking. I've had great results with five milligrams per day. This next person says, I've been taking five milligrams of lithium orotate for a couple of months now. <laughs> Funny, he actually spelt now incorrectly, hoping it would help with my ADHD and chronic depression symptoms. The first weeks I thought I found the holy grail. The stress and anxiety relief was so profound and it was so great in stopping the constant ruminating caused by a recent breakup. But now I'm not so sure what to think. It doesn't do anything for my ADHD apart from better emotions, better emotion and regulation, and I still feel mildly depressed and overall not in a content state. But the funny thing is, I don't care about it as much and I don't feel an incentive to do something about it. 
I feel somewhat disconnected to myself and can only describe it as a form of apathy. I've never had such conflicting feelings about a substance before. So what might stack well with lithium? Lithium should stack well with magnesium and in fact all the other electrolytes since they must all work in a balance with each other. As L-theanine is known to combine well with caffeine, lithium might also be similar since it prevents unwanted overstimulation. Some naturopathic doctors have recommended taking 1000 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D and 400 IU of vitamin E with lithium orotate to offset potential side effects. Now here are some major contraindications with lithium supplementation that you must be aware of. The official NHS website states that you should not take lithium if you have ever had an allergic reaction to lithium or other medicine. You've had heart disease, kidney problems, hypothyroidism, or low levels of sodium in your body, which can happen due to dehydration or low salt diets. Additionally, if you have Addison's disease or Brugada syndrome, or if someone in your family has Brugada syndrome, if you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant, or if you need to have surgery, you should not take lithium supplements. Have a rare heart condition called Brugada syndrome, or someone in your family has this condition. Need to have surgery. They're trying to get pregnant or are already pregnant or breastfeeding. Now, here are the potential side effects associated with lithium supplementation. Now, looking at low-dose lithium between 5 to 20 milligrams, here are the common side effects. First up, we have mild stomach discomfort, nausea, diarrhea, and mild tremors have been noted. Additionally, dizziness, dry mouth, increased thirst and urination, and mild cognitive impairment, for example, memory issues, may occur. And moving on to high-dose lithium, above 20 milligrams, here are the common side effects. So first up, we have severe stomach discomfort, vomiting, and diarrhea. Severe tremors, muscle weakness, and fatigue can also happen. So that pretty much wraps up today's video on lithium supplementation. Remember, if you have used this particular compound before, leave a comment below, drop a comment down below. Let's get a discussion going. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.